Hey everyone, it's the Drive to School Podcast. I am Pastor Goodman. My friend Amelia is back. How's it going? I'm good. How are you? I'm okay. I get to ask how school's going and I picked finals <laughs> week. Uh, so I, I, I'm sorry <laughs> for no. a lot of things. No, no, don't be sorry at all. I actually appreciate talking about it now because, or talking about things now because that's just, busy times are the times when you need to talk to another person, I feel like. Sometimes it's even just a chance to, yeah, it's it's to unpack the stress, the things that are going on, but it's even just sort of to distract you from the things that are taking up 90% of your brain power the rest of the time too, and are a little bit overwhelming. So uh, what do you want to talk about today? How's school going? Talk talk to me about all the things. Yeah, yeah. So school's going good. It's just finals. I have my last one tomorrow. Um, A lot of, a lot of stress in that way, Um, (laughs) but it's, it's not as horrible. It's almost done. Uh, in light of that, I've been thinking about uh, something that I am, and it is codependent. I can, t- I this, this is a word that usually sounds very negative sometimes, but mm. um, I was wondering your thoughts on being codependent because being stressed out right now, sometimes I realize, oh wow, I kind of depend more on these other people, um, and is that a good thing or should I be more dependent on myself? Hmm. That kind of animal. That's actually the the place to maybe come at it from. Um, And not just sort of like, where do you fall on the scale? Because I also am, I'm a codependent person. Uh, I I grab hold of people and and, and they they, they just sort of become a place where I find comfort. But I I think maybe instead of like, do you like to do this or not? um, It's exactly what you just said. Should you depend more on yourself for things? Um, there is, there is, uh, we as Lutherans believe something inside of you called old Adam, that, that there is this original sin that, that wants to especially break the first commandment. You shall have no other gods to fear, love, and trust in God above all things. The one thing in the world that, that you want to have as God more than anything else in the world, you want to guess what that is? Yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And so to not have to depend on anybody at all, it sort of, sort of sounds like trying to be who? God, trying to be God. There's a reason I think that codependency is is sort of inherently looked at as a negative trait among sort of the population at large. And that is just, we all want to be independent. I don't want to necessarily have to depend on somebody else for anything, not for my happiness, not for my well-being, not for my comfort. I should be all in all the alpha and the omega says me, but not says the scriptures. Um, so instead of that, then let, let's, let's sort of crack the book. And as soon as you get people there, there's one guy hanging out by himself in a, in a, like a forest with lots of animals and God looks at him and says, it is not good for man to be alone, alone. And so he creates a helper for him. Um, it's, it's not good for us to be alone. It's, it's not good for us to be independent and sort of, uh, because you don't have to sort of exist in Eden with animals, uh, or at like the beginning of a Disney movie where it's just, you know, you as a princess and a bunch of animals trying to figure life out, you don't need no man. (laughs) Um, and instead of any of that today, uh, what we have as Lutherans in our small catechism is the table of duties. Where, where Luther sort of lays out your vocations, your various callings. And there's something that, that he does as he's going through this, that almost every single one of them has a pairing. And so if there is um, something written to pastors, there's going to be something written to the congregation. If there's something written to parents, there's going to be something written to children, to husbands, to wives, to rulers, to citizens. And, and there's always sort of this, this idea that um, you should be dependent on someone for certain things. Does that kind of make sense so far? Yeah, so it's not that you're going to, like, codependency doesn't mean that you have to be dependent on one specific person all the time, and you don't have to be dependent on yourself either. Like, it can go both ways, but Mm -hmm. it's okay to be dependent on other people who have specific vocations um, in this life, because those are their vocations. Right, you said two really profound things, too. Like, it's, you, you shouldn't be dependent on one person for everything. So as we're sort of laying out the vocations, like there are certain people you're supposed to go to for certain things. And like, you can do it in sort of this silly way. Like I love my wife more than anyone else in the whole wide universe. She's, she's amazing, but um, she should not be like my brain surgeon because she's a teacher, <laughs> right? Like I, I should be dependent on then if I need brain surgery, I should be dependent on a surgeon. That, that's not a stretch, right? Uh, but you can actually start to see where, um, because certain people sometimes just 
we feel more connected. It's just easier to talk to it. There, there, there's more in common. Uh, it's, it's easy to sort of lean into these places, but, but you, you want to watch the temptation. You, you genuinely do to, to take to that person, the things that are not necessarily things they're equipped to deal with or given by God to deal with either. Um, so if I made my wife do brain surgery on me, I would actually burden her conscience because then she'd have to deal with the guilt of having killed me. Um, but but also, I, I mean, in the same way, uh, you have a pastor sent to you by God to preach the word of God, to deal with your conscience. And at the same time, like I, I recognize this when you're, when you're growing up, the one thing in the world that you don't want to do with the things that you're the most guilty of is go and talk to your your pastor. I would rather take that to my friend. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. And and your friend loves you and wants to help you, but might not be the person who's best equipped for that. You have parents who are given certain things by God. The table of duties lays out all of these and their codependency is a good thing. You're dependent in different ways for different things. But, but this idea that, that you should just sort of be all in all is, is wrong. And this idea that you should be only dependent on one person for everything to the point that you can't do anything without them is also wrong. But there is there is a place where you got to recognize you're supposed to be with other people for certain things. That's that's actually very cool, like to think about it that way because I feel like our culture, as you said, is just very like oh you have to be dependent, like you don't have to depend, or independent, sorry, independent. You have to be independent. You don't have to depend on any other people, and you shouldn't because they don't have your best interest at heart. Like only you have your best interest at heart. When really, like sometimes I feel like like myself is the enemy (laughs) it Mm -hmm. it sounds kind of weird but sometimes it's like me versus myself and like my sinful my sinful things that are going on it's like I need to talk to someone else in order to Mm -hmm. get out of my own head oh 100 percent God gives us people is just just so cool that's a, that's a great place for a friend too. just to be like, yo, talk me out of my anxiety right now. Yeah. This is this is what's here. Um, and, and that that's a great place for friendship that that should always be there. Um, it, it's it's this idea, though, um, that that's what when when you you grab hold of this, you kind of mentioned it. It's this balance of power thing that that we get really, really nervous about. Mm-hmm. But even that's sort of addressed in in well, the, the table of duties, because when Luther lays out the vocational pairings, there is a radical power imbalance between all of them. Um, but between parent and child is probably the most profound and easiest to, to deal with. Like who has all of the power in, in this one between parents and children? It, it, it's, it's the parents. But how is that bad? Like it, it, it's, it's bad if it's abused. But the yeah. idea that there would actually be someone out there who does have your best interest at heart because God has your best interest at heart and wants to work through them, even though they're sinful, that means that God wants to use your parents to raise you. And sometimes they're going to screw it up in really interesting ways, but God still wants to use them anyway. And that means he'll, <laughs> he'll accomplish a surprising amount of good through them, even if they have no idea what they're doing. Uh, that, that doesn't sanction abuse. And, and if somebody is, is abusing you in any vocation, that, that's a, not an acceptable thing. Like full stop, should should. Be be warred against should be should be addressed but at the same time this this idea that because abuse exists you should never ever depend on anyone is also just a really great way to be alone yeah so maybe the thing that to sort of sort out then it would be how to start to balance this especially when you're sort of feeling Mm -hmm. particularly codependent what do you think we should do there yeah i think balancing it would be to recognize like well am I trying to just be codependent with one specific person myself include like am I being codependent with myself just in my own self or am I being codependent on one specific person and are they feeling like overwhelmed in some ways because if that's the case maybe I should go talk to my pastor or maybe I should go talk to someone who has the actual vocation that of of this like does that make sense yeah yeah so we, we want to actually recognize that this sort of independent streak we have is not always a healthy one and so we have the desire inside of us to to first bottle things up and and just want to be god mm-hmm. and handle it all ourselves and then second right. to sort of war against the, the the vocations that god gives us by taking the things that we have problems with to people who might not be equipped to handle them and, right. and then yeah it's a, it's a chance to recognize this like there there are certain things certain people are given to do for you brain surgeon easy i know what you're supposed to do for <laughs> me but like there there are some things that my wife should do for 
for me that nobody else should. Some things my pastor should do for me that nobody else should. Some things that my kids should do for me that nobody else should. Uh, and, and when we take those things to, to other people, like if I make other people my kids at the expense of my kids, that's that's not healthy. You can 100% adopt kids. That's awesome. Um, but, but like also, especially in terms of other ones, like th- – you're right. You're not married yet. So there are, there are some things that are only given for husbands and wives to do. Um, in, in the same way, uh, you have somebody who's been sent to care for your soul. So if you're taking all of your spiritual problems to somebody who's not actually equipped uh, to, to handle them, but, but even more so sent by God with his promises to, that God would work through them, well, then mm-hmm. that that's a scary thing because your friend might want to help you even more than your pastor does because your friend has just known you for years and years and years. And, and your pastor um, just hits his job. He's there for, he, he loves his job. He loves you. But like, I, I love my wife more than the brain surgeon does. That doesn't mean I should be the one doing the surgery. I actually, I want somebody in that particular case who loves her less, but loves her in a very specific mm. way. And he loves her by doing his vocation. Um, but, but when we take these things, uh, when we're, when we're codependent on, on the wrong people all the time, uh, mm-hmm. it, it sets us up not only to ignore the people that have been given to us by God, but to, to sort of burden the people who are trying to help with just the fear that they're going to mess it up because they have no promise that God is necessarily going to bless this. Yeah, exactly. Like we think, oh, this is the person who I want to help me right now. But in some ways it's like, well, what is... In, in, in that sense we are being like little gods again like deciding mm-hmm. who's gonna be there for me and who's not when god puts people in our life and gives these gifts of people with certain vocations there to help us in our need and it's really easy to just ignore that sometimes right but the the the, the miracle of it is that you actually this is one of those very few places where you sort of get to have your cake and eat it too um where where like if you're actually going to the places where god uh, he vocates he sends people to address you you can still go to your friends with it and it actually becomes a, a bigger blessing and so like if you have a healthy relationship with your pastor and you tell your friends i actually have a guy who has the answers to all these questions and he cares for me deeply and, and he he, he mm-hmm. takes care of my conscience and my soul you can even come to uh, that that's a joyful thing if you're in a good marriage where you actually just get to brag about your spouse on a regular basis that's a healthy <laughs> thing to do I, I love to brag about my kids like to the point where i'll take up the whole podcast and just tell you the cool stuff they're doing um and, and that's that's where friendship actually grows and blossoms because now like we can connect on those things without necessarily the burden of having to hold the thing up and that's that's sort of one of the great gifts of friendship is that um it because it, it's not actually bound to hold anything up it, it means that if you're you're just going then to to be with a, a good friend it gets to just be that free time where you just get to celebrate all the good gifts that you have together, where you get to even like rejoice mm-hmm. in the, the hardships together too, because it's not your job as my best friend to, to fix this. It's just, you, you get to hear about it and love me in the middle of it while I go and see my doctor or while I, I go and, mm-hmm. and, and work with my pastor or my counselor or any of the other people who have been given by God to, to sort of help care for me in ways they haven't been. Uh, it, it's a joyful thing to, to have a, a relationship with somebody who doesn't have to do anything for you, but just gets to hear about all the ways that God is, is already working and then still gets to sort of help you parse the feelings and all that stuff. Yeah. And that takes the burden off of them too. Like for sure. you, you give the burden to the people who have the vocation to take that burden. And then you also have friends and family and <clears throat> all these other people in your life who are just there for you and who are ready to just help you and be there for you and pray for you and um, be Christ's child, children with you. Like, yeah, I love that. So, so kind of in, in that light, um, and, and sort of with that nuanced light, codependency, A+, plus, but um, there, there, there are ways that, that as anything, it, it can sort of be abused. But no, I, I really like that, that, that way to, to approach it. Yeah, it's very helpful, especially in light of like, trying to figure out who you are as, like, in, your, in yourself. It's more of a, who am I as a child of God, and who can I be there for as well, also, is like... Hmm. Maybe other people need someone and maybe you can be that person to be there and pray for them. Maybe that's your vocation that you just don't even see. That's beautiful. I mean, thanks for hanging out. Blessings on finals. Thank you. Talk to you later. Yep.